Hello, this is our second monthly video for the International Society for Astrological Research. In last month's video, I described exploratory research. And this month, I want to compare exploratory research to another kind of method of doing research, which is called hypothesis testing. So let's see the difference between these two ways of doing research. Well, first of all, when we're conducting research, we often start with exploratory research. We do usually do not jump directly into hypothesis testing because exploratory research, as I mentioned last month, is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to explore the data. We're going to see if our basic ideas look hopeful. Does it look promising that our idea that Leo is inclined to be theatrical, inclined to being an actor, or that Gemini is inclined to be a writer, and maybe the third house. We explore the basic ideas. We see what planets are active. Are we seeing Mercury in Gemini for writers, or Mercury in the third house, or maybe the moon? We're going to see if among our various ideas we're seeing themes develop. Are we seeing the ruler of the houses? Well, we start exploring because typically we have a lot of different ideas. We don't want to narrow ourselves down to one specific idea. We want to have the ideas gradually take shape. So typically in research, we have some ideas we're fairly confident about, but not completely 100% certain of. So we flesh it out. We, we start to get some vague ideas. We start to refine it, get a little clearer and clearer with the exploratory research that I described last month. Okay, now, what is a hypothesis test? In, at the bottom of this slide, I state that a hypothesis test is research in which I state the hypothesis first. So unlike exploratory research, we say straight away, I think that writers will have Mercury in the third house or in Gemini uh, or the ruler of the third house, uh, third house is in a certain house, whatever we think, we are fairly sure that we know what is involved, so we're going to test a very specific hypothesis. We state the hypothesis before we look at the data. So we can't peek at the data <laughs> before we test it. That's called cheating. It's not cheating when you're doing exploratory research, but it is cheating when you're doing a hypothesis test. So these different research methods are like games. They have rules. And you have to follow the rules or else you are cheating. Uh, so we state the hypothesis, we collect the data, and then we see if the data confirms the hypothesis. Now, some astrologers have written articles on great discoveries that they have made by looking at the groups of charts of people or events. So for example, Suppose you find that in the charts of earthquakes that Mars is very often square Uranus. So you're seeing Mars square Uranus in the charts of earthquakes. It makes sense. It's what we expect. It sounds exciting. So if you find this, you go through a lot of charts of earthquakes, and sure enough, Mars square Uranus occurs very often. Have you made an extraordinary discoverer? discovery. Should scientists be excited about your discovery? Have you made a breakthrough? Should we put you on prime time national television to announce your incredible discovery? What do you think? So I hope this is obvious at this point, but the answer is most likely no. You probably have not made a huge discovery. You've probably found something very interesting but not enough to say you've made a breakthrough discovery because probably you did not get that finding from a hypothesis test. So I think all these things should be clear. They should be obvious. We should know these things when we come out of high school. But a lot of us, even if we've been to higher level uh, colleges, we haven't got these basic critical thinking skills that are fundamental to the modern age. So. The finding that Mars is square Uranus in the charts of earthquakes is probably not completely convincing or extremely convincing in the way that a hypothesis test because it probably does not conform to all the requirements of a hypothesis test. So for example, number one, 
There's a good chance you did not state a clear hypothesis before you collected the data. You must state exactly what aspects you expect to see in the earthquakes and what orb you are using in the aspects in order for the research to be a hypothesis test. And it's the hypothesis test that has the strong, that is the strongest evidence where you can say, wow, we have really found something. Uh, exploratory research is extremely important and almost always hypothesis tests follow a long period of exploratory research. So if you're conducting exploratory research, you don't have to apologize for it. It's not a terrible thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a step in understanding. And that's what research is all about. So number two, in order to be a hypothesis test, you must show that the data is collected in a way that's objective, not personally selected by you. Not, it's not, the data does not come in a manner that's prone to bias. So there are different sampling methods, uh, such as random sampling and so on. And there are other ones that are not inclined to being biased by the charts you pick out. So if you happen to do the charts of four or five earthquakes that you happen to look at, uh, that's not an objective way of collecting data and therefore does not meet the requirements of a hypothesis test. Number three, you also need to show that the Mars square Uranus is not likely to occur by chance. It may be because the planets turn retrograde and direct and everything that maybe that aspect occurs more often by chance anyway. So that's what we call a con yeah, compared to a control group. The control group doesn't have to be literally a group of charts, but some way of showing that compared to other groups or other possibilities or random possibilities, you really found something. Okay, so that's what distinguishes a hypothesis test from other kinds of research which are not a hypothesis test. So to repeat a few points here that are critically important. Number one, usually hypothesis tests are conducted after a large amount of exploratory research. So again, do not feel that your exploratory research is unimportant. It's tremendously important. Do not apologize to a scientist if they criticize your exploratory research because that is the normal thing that's done. It's a, it's a step along the way before you get to the ultimate thing of a hypothesis test. Also, qualitative research often shows things that cannot be quantified, things like moods, ambitions, goals, feelings, the narrative stories in a person's life, and many other things are not easily quantified. There's many kinds of valuable research, and they're not all about coming up with a number, you know, a strong evidence of what we call a measurable effect. There's many, many useful kinds of research. So. And lastly, on this slide, we, why do we conduct research to discover something? So if, you, if a colleague, you know, another astrologer is conducting research and you don't think that research is a good way to approach it, for example, some astrologers feel that most quantitative research is never going to lead to anything, keep in mind that's just your belief. And we don't know until the findings are obtained and also, negative results are very important for showing us what is not true. So if somebody is conducting some kind of research and you are skeptical of it, that's fine. And if you are right that this research will not lead to anything good, then the other astrologers will, will realize that as well. So getting negative results from research is just as important as getting positive results because it finds a, we find out what is not true. So if it's not true, that Sun in Leo or Moon in Leo inclines a person to be an actor, that's nice to know. It's a good thing to know what is not true. Okay, bottom line is do not exaggerate your claims based on exploratory research. And this happens in astrology quite often. People will say, oh, I discovered something in earthquakes, Mars is square, Uranus. Well, they have those weaknesses that I cited earlier. So you cannot be so sure of it. It's important research. It's very promising. It's, show, it's showing us some good possibilities that can lead to a hypothesis test. It's the hypothesis test that's the strongest evidence if you're looking for what we call a measurable effect. Many astrologers are not looking for a measurable effect. 
but it's just one area of research and I thought I would address it here. So do not overestimate and also do not underestimate the importance of your exploratory research because exploratory research is so vitally important. It's a huge step in moving forward. Okay, I think that's my last slide. Yes, it is. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify a few things about how exploratory research differs from a hypothesis test, how these different research methods are important at different steps along the way in our research. And I think what I've said here should be common sense. It's just simple, basic, critical thinking. But sometimes we get a little bit sloppy about this. But it's really common sense. If you don't state your hypothesis before you do the research, then uh, you're in an exploratory mode. You can't make as strong claims, but it is an important step along the way. Also, if you have 20 hypotheses and you, know, you have 20 ideas of what's going to occur and only one of them comes out in the research, that's not as impressive as if all of your hypotheses uh, come out right, or if you have only one hypothesis and it's right. So you get penalized, you might say, for making wrong guesses, which is common sense, because just by chance, if you have enough theories that you're testing in, in one research, some of them are going to be true just by chance. There's fancy terminology used in research. It's called a Bonferrani correction. I mean, there's all kinds of fancy terminology. We don't need to get into that but just this basic ideas of how research is conducted and the benefits of things like exploratory research and hypothesis tests and how they each uh, contribute in different ways and not to mix them up uh, and claim more than you should from the results of an exploratory research, for example. Okay, my friends, thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.